everyone. Welcome to Long Arming by Jacqueline. I was going to do a top five Friday on types of binding and then what I realized was each one of these videos is going to be far too long by itself. I mean all together is five. So we're going to do them kind of by themselves and um, so let's do a kickoff. Um, let's do a kickoff. <laughs> so um, what are the top five fun and zesty ways that you can add a little bit of fun and interest in your binding? AKA, one of the top five upgrades that you can ask for if you have a quilt maker or a quilt finisher that you use to do your quilt making start to finish or just your quilting and binding, whatever. Um, things that you might not think of and you just say, okay, bind it with standard binding. All right, so number one, scrappy. If you can't choose a color, why not choose all the colors? And this is a fun one if you make a lot of quilts and when you um, cut your binding, there's always like that little tail, you're playing binding chicken <laughs> at the end of there. And then you can take those little bits and bobs that you trim off and just sew a scrappy binding, just add it to the end of your strip as you go. And then when you have a quilt that's either very neutral, like this one, or very wild and scrappy and there's not like any one color that's gonna work, you have this binding ready. It's great for kids quilts, it's great for charity quilts. Okay, so scrappy. Candy cane stripes, we'll cover that one. Wide. I've got a video that I will put a link below to you on how to do a wide binding a flange, or sometimes called filleted binding, um, and then one that I am calling extra. You want to do an extra binding, and that is basically catching something in the seam when you do your binding. And you can actually do this other places on the quilt, and um, if your quilt, it can stick out from the quilt or it can stick in from the quilt depending on how you do it. It works with the French clip method which is where you sew it all together wrong sides and then turn it right side out and close the gap. It works with um, a strip or rolled binding. So extra. That would be adding in to the seam prairie points, fringe, um, any kind of like anything you want to put in there a little extra to zhuzh it up. So um, I've got the Prairie Points footage done and today we're going to do uh, scrappy binding. So why settle on a color of binding? Like if you can't choose a color, choose all the colors. So in this drawer, it's like a clown scarf of binding. When I'm binding a quilt and I have some left over, I have been throwing it in this drawer. And a lot of it is muslin because I've done a whole series of muslin quilts recently. So we're going to mix a little bit of this in here and I am going to use my scrap binding, put these all together. If I feel like a chunk is too long, I can just add another seam in there to break it up and sort of mix and scramble. And that is going to go on these uh, dog beds that I've been making. And this is like five layers of batting in there um, and I just put a Y back on the back, on the long arm started layering whatever fabric I had on top and I floated the batting and the top on all of these and I used up every bit of a huge tub. I'll show that to you. Exhibit A. The forest is bare. The fields are bare. <laughs> so that tub was beyond full and I used it all up making new dog beds to go in my car and in my house for the dogs. Hildy is getting way too big um, to fit on the dog beds that we built her and then Axel needs a new one too and my poor car it just needs something back there that I can take out and wash. These dogs um, go swimming a lot, they go to the park and get messy a lot and that poor vehicle I need something that can be laundered, removed and laundered. Alright so here we go I'm just gonna start sewing these together and you'll see my crazy clown binding. We'll see. Here we go. Okay, so this 
is the first little puppy blanket. And it's got, it's called this party binding. I probably went give or take 18 inches on a single color and um, a binding. This side is wild, so it almost doesn't matter what color you put on there. But this side is very plain, and I think it certainly adds something to this plain backing to have a little bit of color going on. I think he's going to like it. Got some little pumpkins going on in there, and I really like this. So this um, is a dog blanket, but it has a dog bed. But it has, um, this is really great as a play mat. And I'm gonna show you a little trick. So I am gonna make this into a pocket into which I can put a foam insert to make it like an orthopedic bed. If um, you have watched the false back video, this will give you an idea of what it would look like. So if I were doing a true false back, I would have all this um, quilting over here and on the back I would have just the batting. And then same thing over here, I would have all my quilting over here, different quilting, and then just the batting. And then I would put them together, oops, like so. So every machine, including a long arm, has a limit of how much batting it can put in there. And this is five layers, pretty much there on the limit of how much batting I can put. And then, so pretend there's no backing here, just batting, batting, I'm gonna put those together Pretend I'm going to tack around, but this gives you an idea of how thick and how much body a um, double quilt would be. So you could obviously go with less batting, do a thinner layer of batting on each side and make it more like a normal quilt. But if you're talking about maxing out your machine and putting your, some machines it's going to be three, four, maybe five layers of batting and this is to cushion my dog's elbows. But this will also really, um, little babies crawling around, their little knees and elbows need some cushioning too, it makes a great play mat. And then it's totally reversible. So I've got pumpkins quilted on this side, and I did some um, swirls on this side, but I could have done, this is winter fabric, I could have done a little winter design over here, snowflakes or something like that, and completely different quilting. The only thing they're gonna have in common is the little places where I would do probably like a little plus sign every so often and uh, make these so they don't billow apart. And then if I were doing a false back quilt with separate quilting on each side, I would have put these together first and then bound it together so it looks like one solid side. So I'm gonna make this like a pocket. It's gonna be basically a giant pillowcase. So I've quilted this, I've quilted this, I'm going to bind this other one and then I'm just going to take a stitch close to the binding and stitch around three sides and then on the fourth side I'm just going to stitch in a little bit, say five inches or so. And that is because I'm sticking a pool noodle in there to be like the bolster. Um, think of it like the arms of a chair. Dogs like to put their head or their little feet up on the edge and then in the middle I can put an orthopedic foam insert and then there's no closure necessary. So I'm just pull all that out and launder this and then stuff it back in. And if I feel like it needs a closure, I might add on the last side some little, um, I don't know, a little bit of snaps. Maybe I'll sew on some straps and have it be tied closed. I really don't think it's gonna need it though. I really like how this looks. So let's call this party binding. And every time you have a two and a half inch strip left over or some binding left over, whatever is your favorite size, you can just start sewing those little bits and bobs together and get a whole roll of this and just be ready to bind basically for free. That's something you'd probably throw away anyways. Keep it in your drawer. I think it adds so much to this plain side and kind of solves the question of what the heck do I put on the not plain side. Every idea you think might work, put them all. I mean, more is more, right? Okay, so I will um, be showing more techniques. So we'll see this finished and I've got actually, Hildy's on her bed right now. So I'm gonna bring that up here and show you the finished product of that. Came out super cute. That had the prairie points and I didn't even put them in the binding. 
So um, that is a binding technique. But you can put it wherever you want. It's your quilt. Um, don't be afraid to stick stuff in your seams. Have a great day. Bye!